Michigan State, UCLA. This is March Madness. Marco, who do you like and why? Well, I'm going with Michigan State. And, RJ, i got to be honest with you. If you would have asked me three weeks ago about this Michigan State team, they had no shot at even making the tournament. But, you know, once again, they made the late run, and Tom Izzo got them in here. And now that they're in here, you know, they're like everybody else. Everybody's starting zero and zero. You know, you're working your way to get in there. And Tom Izzo, to me, has got to be regarded as one of the best uh, tournament coaches in all of basketball. There's no question about it. And I agree. So who do you like? I like Michigan State. So let's talk about coaching for a second. What's nice about these videos, we can talk some macro theory. I believe coaching is one of the key factors in the tournament because it's unlike any other game. It's unlike any other animal, as they say. And your experience there, I mean, imagine going to Coach K against a second-year coach. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 a, it's a mismatch during the regular season, but I think it's double the mismatch during the tournament. Now, unfortunately, I highly respect the UCLA coach. Now, you're pretty familiar with him. He was at Pitt. Yeah, Ben Howland, and one of the problems and, and one of the reasons that I'm going against uh, UCLA in this game is UCLA had a great season, but the last three games of the season, they, they really fell apart. And this is something that really concerns me, and it's something nothing new to Ben Howland. He is a guy that preaches defense first, and offense seems to come second. And this team, the last three games, shot under 40% from the field. Now, here's the thing. Isn't shooting something that just has a natural variance? Remember, one of the things VR talked about in his video on halftime betting, which a lot of people have enjoyed, is that if you have a team shooting significantly under their season average and a team shooting significantly over, that there's a, you know, to use the, si the statistical term, there's typically a regression to the mean in the second half. If UCLA shoots bad, isn't that just fluky? And thus you should toss it out like in the NFL if a team has a lot of turnovers? With what VR was referencing, talking about, you're talking about that game that's in Yes, in true. Pro We're talking here, this is, you know, Fool me once, fool me twice. I mean, this is three straight games that this team's shot these, bad. These guys just quit being able to shoot? Well, you know, teams go in slumps. Let me tell you, I haven't shot, I've shot basketball five times in the last two years, and I'd be a 10,000, I'd be a minus 10,000 in a game of horse against you. Oh, my God, yeah. But, <laughs> you know. So, I, I mean, I, I say that with a smile, but really, is three games enough to worry you about the shooting? That's where a trend starts. I mean, you, you know, where do, where, do you, where do you look? Where do you say that this is not just a trend, that this is now a, a distinct pattern and a problem? And to me, they're not going into the tournament on the right foot. No, and, I agree with that. But, Michigan, maybe, but you could make the case because they shot bad for three games, they're undervalued. You could make that, but... Uh, they right, so, so I, we've got the UCLA shooting bad. We've got Michigan State's hot. We're and another thing that I like to look at at this time of the year is, you know, you've got a situation where everybody has their brackets and you've got the Vegas line. Mm -hmm. You've got the seeding. So you've got the NCAA committee telling you this team's better than this team based on seeding, mm -hmm. but you have Vegas that gives you a point spread and a lot of times will have a different uh, opinion. This is one of those games because we have a seven seed versus a 10 seed, and the 10 seed is favored in this game over the seven seed. And I know I'm probably one of the few handicappers, and I think it's one of the reasons that I've been so successful over the years. Well, thank you know, the humility. We appreciate well, that. I, <laughs> I think it's one of the keys because I actually respect the Vegas line makers a lot more than most people do. And I know you have to be cocky and say, I'm better than the Las Vegas Lions makers, but I do give them a lot of respect, and it, hel it helps influence how I make a lot of my plays. So, so let's think about this. There is an objective number, the seed, mm -hmm. which tells you clearly who the better team is in the eyes of the committee. Correct. All right. You've got a number where Vegas is telling you that the other team, the, 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 the worst seed, is better. Mm -hmm. This feels very analogous to what happens, and I've heard uh, different systems based around this. When you have a ranked team against an unranked team, two objective numbers, right. there's a ranking, but because the ranked team's on the road, they're the underdog. Mm -hmm. The theory is the bookies know that they can put out a number a little bit shorter 
May, just so the lower seed is the favorite is enough. Mm. May, even if they shot, thought Michigan State should be three and a half, they would put it out at one, one and a half because it's enough. It's the, it's, it's, it, anyone that's going to go by the seeds is going to take the point. Right. So I tend to like that, though I don't like this game as much because I just respect, I, I respect UCLA too much. I like that theory. And do you know offhand how many um, lower seeds are favored? Um, I haven't. I don't have the numbers on all of them. I just did the games that we did for all the right, show. All right, so I like it. I like that. Continue. And this is a situation where Michigan State, and, and again, if you've got a, a team of UCLA that's not shooting well, in the style and tempo that this game's going to be played at, it's going to be played slow, slow, and slower. Both guys like to play a slower style. There's not going to be many possessions, you know. I like that favors to me, Michigan State. The Big Ten seems to have more of those lower scoring games mm. than, than UCLA uh, in the Pac-10, and I think that's going to frustrate a team that's not shooting well. So I think it just sets up well for Michigan State. Here. Give us your official projection. I've got Michigan State winning this game 65-60, and Tom Izzo doing the magic and moving on to the next round. All right, I'm going to go neutral on this. I, I like one of your concepts, as I said. I, I really lament that we're having to burn two great coaches in this game because I really think you can make money in the tournament just betting coaches. You're burning two great ones in this case. I'm going to go neutral. We got a minute. How did we do last week? Last week, uh, the show that we did live here, we had uh, two videos. Uh, so now, now I can predict this because I can just tell by the way you're prefacing it. You didn't do great there, but you did good with your little uh, home we, video, we, your we, home webcam. Go ahead. We did one and one on the show, and nah. you were no neutral on both games. You, you know, so I saved. So those who listen to me saved the Jews. <laughs> right? Is there any scenario that is going to ever make well, when you I, not when, look good? When I'm when I when I'm doing. I'm going to look into the camera, guys. When I'm helping you like this, okay, that you, what was it, about three seconds it took you to get to that camera, Dustin? <laughs> I think he's fading on us. All right, if I do anything to help you guys, I'm going to let it be known. And if Marco doesn't like that, then that's tough, tough noogies on Marco. Well, then, guys, put the camera on me, Dustin. <laughs> From those poor little home videos, you know, in my office at home, I gave you guys two out of three, so you not only, you know, you, you made a profit, you know. For sure. You know, not just saved the I juice. Probably, the I guy. probably would have been on the two winners and would have been neutral on the other I'm sure way. you would have been. You might have been on the opposite side of the one loser, I'm sure. What was it real quick? <laughs> you know, <yeah. laughs> All right. Your turn to continue the conversation, the comment section with Marco and me. And next up, is it your best bet? Best bet. We're we going. got Marco's best bet of the week on video. See you then.